So here we have a Samsung Plasma TV, model HP-T4254. And today, we're going to fix it. So watch as I take this old plasma and bring it back to life with the help of a Shop Jimmy kit. Uh, as mentioned before, this is the uh, Samsung power supply from the uh, Plasma TV. So I'm going to bring your attention over here to this. We got a uh, transistor, actually a MOSFET. Uh, we have QX801, QX802, and if we go over here, we also have QS801 and QS802. Uh, a couple other MOSFETs are quite a bit larger, but uh, also important to the circuit, of course. And uh, so this is the uh, typical power supply. It's a model BN44-00161. And there were also uh, 162A. Uh, basically the same thing. Uh, there may be minor differences for uh, the size of the TV it happens to be. I'll flip something over here. See here, the check mark for 47 has been marked off. So obviously it could also be for a 50. Uh, this was engineered for a 47. Now, uh, exactly what differences there may actually be in the circuitry regarding that, I couldn't really tell you. Uh, you know, I, I don't have uh, that type of information from Samsung about that. Um, this is actually from when was it? I think 2005 that this was made, 2005 or 2007, perhaps. Um, uh, yeah, actually, the diagram I have says 2007. So let's take a look over at the diagram, and you can see, can zoom in here, let me hit the zoom button. Focus. Ah, focus stinks, doesn't it? Because it brings out the herring bones and things. So, anyway, let me. Okay, so um, now what we have, what well, I received online from Shop Jimmy, if you've ever shopped there, uh, you'll know the name. If not, um, I'll provide a link below in the description of the video. And here's what you get. This was uh, $14.99, about, so about for 15 bucks, you get a kit from Shop Jimmy that has everything you could possibly need. Look at this. We got we even got a couple linear ICs. I wasn't expecting that. Um, we've got our MOSFETs, the big MOSFETs. We've got a fuse. We've got some uh, SMD type of... Uh, See, DX, these are diodes. These are the smaller uh, MOSFETs. The, one of these I have actually found a short in circuit. Uh, so, and since I knew that Shop Jimmy had a kit with these transistors in it, I could have just bought them on my own and then uh, maybe found out that other things weren't uh, so good later on down the road. So, you know what? I figured for 14 bucks, it was well worth it. Here's uh, some output coupling trans um, capacitors. Uh, these are rated, let's see. Yeah, so these are 2200 microfarads at 16 volts. Now, the originals that came in uh, with the board were 10 volts, only rated at 10 volts. And uh, I think these are, what are these, Rubicon? Yeah. So these are, here's some good quality. This is a Rubicon capacitor. And specs, well, let's see. Oh, yeah, it's a 105 centigrade capacitor. Uh, 
So that's almost uh, military grade, if I'm not mistaken. So there's another fuse for some reason. Uh, some SMDs. Oh yeah, some surface mount resistors. Uh, yeah, and you never really, you know, when you're uh, when you're looking at the big stuff to replace on a circuit board such as this, you hardly ever think of, well, the surface mounts are probably fine, you know, and hey, maybe they are, but you never know. They could be, they could be blown out, and we'll check them. And you know, look at this, IC uh, eight oh ICP eight oh one. I'm not really sure where this is on the circuit just yet, but. Um, so I'm not even sure what this does. Uh, could be a PWM of some sort. Uh, let's see. ICP801, if we go to the manual and let's tilt things around here. So, uh, the last time I tried doing a search on this, it didn't work out at all. ICP 801. I don't think the fonts in the no, the fonts in this uh, PDF for some reason did not translate. Uh, probably because of where it was made in Japan or China, no, South Korea, I suppose, since it's a, it's a Samsung. Let's see how we do here. Yeah, herring bones. I know. I'll get another way of doing this. Don't you worry. So anyway, it's a L4981A. So what does this do? It's got ST Microelectronics Power Factor Corrector. Hmm. Okay. So here we are. We have STI Electronics. And here's the basic description. Ah, control boost PWM up to 0.99 uh, picofarads. Limit line current distortions to less than 5%. Universal input mains, feed forward line load regulation. A uh, whole bunch of things. Low start current. So the description says provides necessary features to achieve very high ready power factor up to 0.99 uh, realized in BCD uh, uh, 6011 technology. This power factor corrector regular contains control functions designed for high efficiency power supply with pseudosoidal line current consumption. Wow. Uh, can easily be used in systems with mains voltages between 85 and 265 without any line switch. Aha. The new PFC offers the possibility to work fixed frequency or modulated frequency, optimizing uh, the size input filter, both operating frequency modes, working together with average current, yada, yada, yada. Besides power MOSFET gate driver, precise voltage reference extremely externally available rather uh, air amplifier under voltage lockout current sense soft start uh, to limit the number of excessive components the device integrates with protection as over voltage and over current uh, so it's very precise and has over voltage and over current let's Yeah, so after that, we get on to other things such as the problem circuitry. So, scroll through that. Here's our VS section. So, we're going to re be replacing uh, these guys and some of these zeners. Uh, some of these uh, diodes, old diode bridges, and perhaps a uh, resistor or two. I'm going to have to reference uh, the Shop Jimmy website for uh, 
the numbers of them. Well, actually, no, no I'm sorry, the numbers are on the packages, so I don't really need to do that. So, yeah, they're, uh, they're really good with that sort of thing. So all I have to do is go to the circuit board and start measuring values of these items. As I said before, we're going to start off by just desoldering and getting to these uh, four guys. Uh, this one I took out already. That was the right short. But perhaps if you want to see how I uh, go about desoldering things, I'll show you that. And why no flux, you ask? Well, this is a type of Chemwick. It's got the flux embedded into it already. So uh, when you're desoldering, especially large components like this, uh, it's fine. You don't really need to go out and uh, slap, start slapping on a bunch of external flux to, uh, to facilitate it. Unless... Unless the joints were really, really dry. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case here. Now one of these pins is folded over a little bit. Just gotta get underneath and pry up a little. Get a little more to this. attack from the top as well. The solder has a tendency to go up to the top side as well because uh, sometimes they continue circuitry up on top, sometimes not. But let's take a look see here. Uh, in this case not really but it does see if you see here it has a tendency to feed, run through the feed through uh, via you might call it, and uh, stay attached. So, okay, so move back to this. And this little, this little guy is pretty irregularly shaped. It doesn't, it's not flat. Um, here's the one next to it, and the sort of is like, uh, how do you say? Uh, preened out or exploded out a little bit even though there's nothing in there. Um, I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe to help uh, gather more solder around the lead. I'm not quite sure. But let's keep attacking. Ooh, that got a nice dose of it right there. You can always tell when the you get a lot of smoke coming up on off of the, the solder wick. And it's time to clean. Clean your tip. Always a necessary thing to do. Helps conduct the heat better. Dirty tips do not conduct heat well. Here's my little trip to you, tip to you guys out there. If you don't have one of these little flat ratcheting action guys, get one. Uh, this is from General Hardware. I may have uh, wrecked it at some point, but uh, it seems to be working enough to uh, loosen a screw or two here and there. And fold that down, get it out of the way. Tip in. Just the tip there misses. Don't feel nothing else. Of course, it would help if the thing stayed in place, but well, you could always just put a little tape around the side. 
Maybe I'll do that. Okay, so solution, a little bit of tape. And, oops, flip this the other way. It's not ratcheting back as smoothly as it should, so it's seen better days. So once once it's primarily loosened up, we can just get that bit in there and use it to spin around the screw. And if that becomes too much of a pain in the butt, then what else can we do? pair of pliers on the situation. So she is loose enough to do by hand. Which in this case, I think it's yeah, there it comes. Okay, so that's out. big pliers here. We're going to grab this, give it a little bit of a twist. Okay. So that's loose except of course for the middle one. Let's go back there and just grab it one side here and heat this up. I hate the idea of having to add more solder to this, but I might just have to, to get it out from this direction. Or maybe not. I mean, it's just being, and you just have to, yeah, just yank on it a little harder. That's it. So, now I, mean, I am curious. I don't think this is bad. In fact, I'm pretty sure, 99% certain it isn't bad, but let's take a look anyway. Still nothing. Get that point. So now we're getting point 209. We're getting a much higher reading before. Uh, still nothing in that direction. Nothing in that direction. Interesting. So let's take a look at one of the newer uh, MOSFETs that came with the kit. So, if you're curious, let's see how this reads on the meter. Might just do the same thing. It is doing the same thing, isn't it? Let's just change polarities. I don't think anything's going to change. Yeah, no. Oh, well, okay. 1.182 from hot to uh, the right leg. If we go here, uh, we get nothing. So that's interesting. Let's put it on ohms. So if we read the ohms on this at all, nothing. Let's see if we read ohms here. Yeah, we do. 128K, is that? Yeah. So, okay, so, so, even though it seemed okay on the circuit, it definitely is not okay. So, that'll teach you. Okay, so, the Samsung uh, power board for the plasma has been rebuilt, and we changed this, 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 and this, MOSFET outputs, and we also changed a couple ICs, this here, um, on these boards here, there's an IC on each one, and 
what else did we change on the, on the flip side here? A uh, couple transistors and uh, transistors here and there. Um, that's pretty much it. And um, so the last thing to change, which are over here, these two sockets are for capacitors. And I wanted to show you Let's put this aside for a moment. I'll just show you what those were all about. So what we have here is an ESR meter, amongst other things, and it's actually a component checker, and um, checks all sorts of components, capacitors being one of them. So this is an original out of the uh, Samsung board. And we're gonna test what it says here. So what this is looking at is ESR. So it says ESR equals 0.21 ohms. Uh, voltage loss of 5.1% and the capacity is uh, 1938 microfarad is supposed to be 2200 so let's take a look at the other one that came out of the board and the polarity doesn't matter on this it figures it out automatically uh, even if there's three pro there are three probes in case you want to test a transistor so uh, anyway and checking and look at the capacity on this, 1,718 microfarads, 6.6% V-loss, ESR 0.25, pretty drastic, this one. And this is, I'll show you on the schematic. So the capacitors are CX813 and CX814. here and see that this guy do the zoom with the phone here and over where my cursor is over to the right CX813 is on the 5 volt rail and where is CX814 I suspect it's close by Oh, it's actually on the same 5 volt rail. So, CX814 and 813, both 2200 microfarad caps, and both uh, from the factory, you can see it says 10 volt. And of course, the replacements are 16 volt. So, let's just uh, take a quick look again at what the meter says. So it, it changed. <laughs> the meter will jump around a little bit with uh, every time you test it. It basically is saying that it has a high ESR uh, for such a low voltage cap. Now, here's a Rubicon that was supplied with the kit. And we'll take a reading on that. what we come up with here. Look at that. VLOS 1.5%, ESR 0.01%. And it's reading the proper capacity. Much better. Let's see what the other one reads. Of course, these are both unused as of yet. But they're quality brand. Point zero zero percent or ohms rather uh, 1.5 percent that's pretty outstanding for uh, compared to this piece of trash yeah oh now we're back 
to .23. Still not good. And still uh, 1,700 microfarads. Very bad, very poor. When you have a capacitor that is not reading anywhere as near what it's supposed to be reading, then you've got problems. And uh, it's no surprise to me that these capacitors probably helped cause the short in the um, in the outputs over here. So the out the output of that is tied in with the schematic. Output is tied in to uh, QX801, QX802 over here on the left, which uh, QX801 was the one that was actually shorted as a read it in the circuit and uh, the output from the secondary of that transformer uh, is going into yeah QX uh, on the 5 volt rail QX8 CX rather 813 814 so it's got a direct relationship to the output of that transistor uh, transformer uh, probably pulling too much from it and uh, cause it to pop. So here is the TV taken apart. Got the power supply out and we'll work on it. See how things go. Okay, this is pretty much the moment of truth. I've installed it. Got all the Connectors connected and about to fire it up and see what happens. If, uh, if it only makes one or two clicks, it'll probably be good. Uh, symptom was before when it, you power, tried to power it up, you had uh, four or five consecutive clicks, off and on, off and on. So let's see what happens. HDMI 2. There we are. In. There's the computer. Beautiful, Joe. It's a plasma. Damn. It'll be better. Bitchin'. Nice. All right. Yeah. Always like these things. Fucking this nice. is a 720p, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even still, it's fine. That's all I'm getting out of my cable box. So what's the fucking difference? All right, Joe, you gonna do a YouTube video on how you fix it? Yeah. Jimmy, uh, what is it? Jimmy fix Shop it? Jimmy. Shop Jimmy. <laughs> Ooh. That's the magic sound. Cool. Searching for signal. There it finds yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Here is so it's packed up, ready to go. Another satisfied customer.